less of a 660. 660. Sing the first and last verse. to take 
the kids to church, we see that about 55% of them went on to remain faithful. Fathers, I hope you see the importance that you have to, to fill the father role in your home. However, there was about a 72-73% of those kids who were uh, had remained faithful in the church. They had both parents, both parents involved and attending faithfully. Out of the uh, study that showed that 75% of the kids had left the church from ages 18 through 29, they, they questioned the ones who had stayed. 25% uh, of the kids uh, who at 18 through 29 had stayed in the church and remained faithful, they asked them what it was that uh, what it was that, that helped. And their studies showed that uh, as they were doing these, these questionnaires and asking them these different questions, uh, that 25%, one of the major things, the number one thing they noticed was that as a family at home, they ate dinner together Five to five days, at least five days out of the seven day week. They ate dinner with their family. They felt connected with their own personal family. You see how important it is for us in our homes to make sure that we feel connected as a family. How can we expect to feel connected to a great spiritual family at church if we don't try at home? Number two, they served with their families in a ministry, in church. They were there. They were, they were involved. They were helping in any way they could. The events that went on at church, the kids were not only there, but guess who else was there? The parents. The kids were not just dropped off all the time to help out with whatever it may be. The parents were involved too, and that helped these 25% to stay and remain faithful. Number three, they had, uh, they said that they had at least one spiritual experience, Bible study, uh, maybe whatever it might be, in their home each week. Now, how often do you do that? How often do you make sure that you pray together as a family at home? How often are you making sure that you are studying God's Word with your family? It helps. Number four, these kids were entrusted with responsibility within their church home. And it was important to them because they felt needed. They felt that connection. They felt like they were able to help. And number five, they had at least one faith-focused adult in their lives along with their parents. So not only was it important for their parents to, to be that role in their lives, but to have somebody else, elder, preacher, youth minister, Bible class teacher. And so we see the importance in the role that we play as adults in our kids' lives. Why is it that so many today just end up stopping? What are we going to do about it? Because, see, it's, it's, it's now that we need to act because there are so many, and I, I guarantee you, you can ask uh, so many parents who have grown kids now who are not a part of the church, and they would tell you, I wish I would have done something about it sooner. I wish there was something I had done. You know, it's a it's a great thing to uh, to be able to honor our parents and and uh, those who are fulfilling their God given responsibility in the home. You know, but if you look at our nation as a whole, parents are struggling. I see it every day with the kids that I teach at school and, and the interaction that I have with some of their parents and I just wonder, man, how have these kids made it to where they are today with the parents that they have? And sometimes that, that same attitude and, 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 and actions enter into the church and, and we have these kids sometimes who, who just don't have the parents who are leading them in the right direction. So many children who are growing up being raised to have little care about God. I can remember a, a fourth grader just a couple of years ago had a, had a shirt on, and it was Noah's Ark, okay? And, and it had all the animals uh, out, 
you know, and, and just uh, a nice picture on the shirt. And I said, oh, I love your shirt. I said, uh, what all can you tell me about it? No idea. Fourth grade, had no idea that it was Noah's Ark that was on her shirt. She just had a shirt she was wearing. You know, I ask, and, and I, I, I talk to kids all the time because they know that I'm, I'm a youth minister here at Skyline. I, I try to tell them all the time that I work with I work with all kinds of youth at, at Skyline Church of Christ. I invite them to come as much as I can. And uh, But most of my kids at school, they don't go. They don't go to church. Never have. Parents don't take them. It's not a necessity. They don't see that as, as oh, you know, they, well, well, we're Christian people, but we don't go to church. They don't see the importance. Why is this? Well, parents are struggling. Parents are not fulfilling their responsibilities that God has given them. And, and so I want to look this morning at, at what it really takes for us as parents what we need to be doing to make sure that we are fulfilling that God-given responsibility, making sure that we can do whatever we can to be sure that our kids, when they're 18 to 29 years old, they're faithful. Because is that not what we want? Look at five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, the kids who are sitting here today, we want them here still at that time, right? Right? We want, them, we want them teaching Bible classes. We want them leading in worship services. Whatever we can do, uh, getting them involved, we want them to be faithful members here at Skyline Church of Christ. But see, it's our responsibility for that. And I think what better place to look than God, our Heavenly Father. Because see, He's given us just by His example. Some things that I think that we can implement, you and I can implement in our lives to be sure that we are teaching and leading our kids in the right direction. Cooper read Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 26 there where he says that our heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? We see this idea that God... Our he is our heavenly father. He looks after us and he cares for us as our spiritual father. And he gives us a great example of the things that we can include in our physical lives as physical parents to our kids today. And I want to look at a couple of those. Number one, turn to Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. And we see that Number one, first and foremost, God loves. God loves his children. He loves you and me. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from what? From the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is nothing that will ever be able to separate us from God's love. Because God loves us. And, and so what happens? Why is that like you know, one of the most important things for us to understand? Because you see what the fact that God loves us, that is the reason we're here. Right? Do you think God would have created and, and went through all of this trouble to, to have us here on the earth if he didn't love us? Or you think back to in Genesis when uh, the, uh, he sent the flood. Why, why did he leave Noah and his family? Why didn't he just take them on to heaven? Because he loved us. And he wanted us to have a chance. Why do you think that Jesus, Jesus Christ came? Why would God send his only begotten son... Why? Because he loved us. You see, having proper love, having godly love, will lead you to do something, right? It'll lead you to act on that. God loves every individual. Acts 10, 34. He, he is no respecter of, of persons. He doesn't pick or choose. He loves everyone, and, and he hopes that everyone will end up obeying him. There are many that refuse. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. 
If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride of life, is not from the Father, but from the world. And there are those who love the world and, and fall away from the love of God. Everything God has done in heaven and on earth, everything that God has done is out of love for his children. Man, I want to talk about a great love. 1 John 4, 9 to 10, and this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we, so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. There's the love we see. So God was going to do whatever he could to make sure that we had hope because he loved us. God wanted to do everything he had to do, and that meant I will give up my only begotten son, Jesus Christ. I will allow him to die for us, for our sins, because he loved us so much. There's no greater love than that. He sacrificed his only begotten son, John 3, 16. And so I want to think about that love that we see that God, our heavenly father, has for us. What does that mean for us? Because you see, I, I see it every day at, at school. Parents that claim to, to love their kids. And I'm going to tell you right now, no. Most of the parents that I, I, I see a lot, well, I say most. Don't, don't get me wrong. I have, I have some kids who, who have, you know, good home lives. But out of the ones who have bad home lives, you cannot tell me that you love your kid and you have them in that situation. There's no way. I can't say that I truly love my kid, but I'm only going to take them to worship services half the time. Wait a second. What's the most important thing for them? Well, it's for them to be in church and for them to be a Christian one day so that they can go to heaven one day. So you mean to tell me love is only taking them half the time then? You mean to tell me that, that showing them love is, is, is just having them every now and then? at Bible class. Really? I've seen parents, oh, I love my kids, you know, my, my relationship with my spouse has nothing to do with, no. That is wrong. If you have divided, if you have done something in your home to divide the home, what kind of love do you have for your kids? Because they are greatly affected by that. See, we need godly love. We need the love that we can see from our Heavenly Father. The love that He has for us. And we need to implement that same kind of love for our kids within our home life and within our spiritual lives. Because see, the most important thing for them is to one day be Christians. And to one day be leaders in the church. And to one day be Bible class teachers. And, and to one day end up having their own kids. To show them the same importance of, of, of obeying God and, and having a relationship with God. That's the most important thing for them. And so how much do we truly love our kids if that's not at the forefront of what we're teaching them? And what we're leading them in? Oh, but, you know, busy lives, right? And, and baseball this and, and football this and sports this and, you know, school that. Maybe we need to rewind a little bit. Take a step back and say, hmm, what's most important? Am I showing a true godly love for these kids in what I emphasize in our home life and in our spiritual lives? Number one, God loves us. And I hope that we have that same kind of love for our own kids. And that will cause us to act upon that in the way that we lead them and lead our family. Number two, we see that God provides. Now, turn back to Matthew chapter 6, and verse, uh, beginning about verse 25. And you've probably read this before, but, but it just makes sense, okay? It makes sense. See, number two is that God provides for his children. He provides for us in several ways. No doubt the spiritual, but physical also. <coughs> Excuse me. Beginning in verse 25, he says, Therefore I tell you, 
Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? He says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father does what for them? He feeds them. And, and he says, are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He says, But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first. What? Y'all know this verse? Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What was he talking about, all these things will be added to you? Well, he's talking about the fact that if you are seeking first God's kingdom, He's going to provide. You see so many people, well, I've got to work this. See, it's, it's, it's part of my job. I've got to work for my family. I, I've got to be focused on that, making this money for my family. I've got to be focused on doing this, on that. And, and God says, hold up. Jesus says, look at everything around you. God provides for it. And are you not more valued than that? You are His children. He is your Heavenly Father. And if you will focus on seeking God first in His kingdom, He's going to provide. He's got it. He's there for you. And man, how comforting is it to know that, that we have a God, a Heavenly Father, right, who is going to provide for us. God out of love provides and cares for His children. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in all the heavenly places. God blesses us. Jesus taught this there in Matthew chapter 6. He provides for us physically, He provides for us spiritually. Why should we have to worry? What do we have to worry about? What, what do we have to be anxious about? Because, you see, the God who created literally everything that we can see today, all, all around us, that God is the one who's providing for us. So what are we anxious about? What are we worried about? Why, why are we focused on other things? Because, see, we don't, we don't have a need to be. The only need we have is to be focused on God, and everything else will work and fall into place. There are many parents who obviously fail to provide for their children's needs. First Timothy 5, 8 obviously says, If anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. And, and so looking back and, and comparing it to parents today, God provides for every need that we have. What about us as parents? Because I, I, I think in some ways we are sure to provide the food that they need to eat. We are sure to provide the clothes that they need to wear. But if we're not careful, we're not providing for them spiritually. And we've got to make sure that that's of the utmost importance. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 you look there, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but instead of what? what? What are parents to do? Bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. That's the, what we're supposed to do as parents. Bring them up. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way should he, he in the way that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Where are we at? Thinking about the things.
things that we do as parents. What are we doing to make sure that our kids have a deep love, deep respect, and a great relationship with their Heavenly Father? Because that's the most important thing. And if we're not providing that for them, we're not doing right by them. We're not upholding to our responsibility. Number three, God is always available. How wonderful is it to know that God is available? Look at Acts chapter uh, 17. Acts 17, verse 27. Uh, Paul addresses the people there, <coughs> excuse me, in Athens. Uh, and Acts 17, verse 27, he says, and he, made, uh, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. Having determined uh, allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward Him and find Him, yet He says He is actually not far from each one of us. He's not far if we're looking, right? God is always available to His children. Think about how blessed we are to, to be able to pray to God, to be able to reach out to God in prayer. How often are we teaching our kids to, to do that? To reach out to God in prayer. How often are we uh, looking for God in Scripture? Opening His Word. Studying God's Word. Showing our kids that it's important to do that. It's important to study. Matthew chapter 7 verses 9 through 11 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Matthew 7. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. And which one of you, if, <coughs> or which one of you, if, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much, will you, uh, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who who seek Him? How much seeking are we doing? Are we looking for God? Because He's always available. He's there for us. First Peter three twelve. The eyes of the Lord are on the uh, are on the righteous. His ears are open to their prayer. But instead, He says, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. As long as we're seeking first God's kingdom and, and we're putting Him at the forefront in our lives and we are have penitent hearts and we're striving each day to, to do the best that we can, the eyes of the Lord are on us. He's there. He's not far. His ears are open to our, prayer, our prayers. Think about how wonderful it is to know that God's there for us. He's available to us. Parents, how available are you to your kids? Now, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself because I, I see it all the time. Parents who just really don't have the time. Or, or you know, they, they, they get frustrated. They get annoyed. And so, man, it's just easy. Let me cut this TV on her. Or, or, or here, here's a cell phone. Here's a, here's a, and don't get me wrong. I, I understand once they get to a certain age. You know, a cell phone's needed in a lot of ways. But man, how many, what are we doing when, when, when we're trying to, to find TVs and Playstations and, and, and all these different things to, to keep them, uh, keep them their, their attention so that I don't have to as much, right? I don't have to worry about them as much now. I don't have to interact with them as much now. I don't have to be annoyed by them as much now because I can shove all of this in their face. How, how available are we if we're throwing all of these other things? Because here's the deal. If we're not making ourselves available to our kids for them to ask questions, because, man, let me tell you, there's some tough questions out there. They see, especially once they hit that middle school age, even younger now, there are things that go on in fourth and fifth grade that you it would just blow your mind, okay, with the things that some of these kids know. It, it makes me afraid for Jack, okay, because I, I see the stuff that they talk about. I mean, I'm talking like fourth graders 
like getting in trouble for, for vaping at school, okay? Like, why in the world, where did they find these things? Like, I, I don't know, okay? The, the, the things that they're doing, and it's just, it's everywhere. Evil is everywhere, and our kids are going to face it. So if we're not making sure that we're talking to them, and, 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 and in the first place, we're not studying God's Word, and then we're not available to them also, for them to come to us and ask these questions and talk to them about this kind of thing, what do we expect for them to, to be? Where are they learning? And, and let me tell you, too, when you are letting your kids get on social media and, and you're not available to them either and, and they're seeing all this trash that's on Snapchat and this trash that's on TikTok. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some good stuff on it, okay? Sometimes there's some good stuff, all right? But right on there with it is, is a bunch of trash. And, and I'm telling you, it's dangerous. It is dangerous. The stuff that these kids are able to just have at their fingertips. And in and, and light of that, we're also not available. We're, we're also not making sure that, that we're leading them and, and asking them questions about it. And, and trying to help them through those things. They, they've got questions. But if we don't make ourselves available, they're not going to ask. Where do you think they're finding the answers? All in the wrong places, I'll tell you that much. We need to be available to them. I want to tell you, just this year I had, it kind of, I, I couldn't believe, you know, we, we were talking. And, you know, as a teacher, you, you think that most of your kids, you know, what you're going, and, and all day you're in school and, and you're learning and learning and learning and and, you know, the, their favorite thing is PE or, or, you know, break time, right? They, they love break and they love PE. That's when they're not having to take notes and learn math in my class, right? Uh, and so we had Christmas break coming up. And I was talking and I was making a joke. I was like, I know y'all would much rather be here with me next week. But, you, uh, you know, don't come to school because I'm not going to be here. And one of my kids was like, yes, I would. That threw me off. Like, I didn't even know what to say. And I, I talked to him about it later, and he was just like, man, I, I'd rather be here than go home with uh, my parents. And my, my Well, actually, his father's not in the home. It's just his mom. And it, like, cut me deep, you know? You see that stuff all the time. But the, so many times as parents, if we're not careful, if we're not there, if we're not available to our kids, we're, we're not seeing what they need. We've got to make sure we're available. Last point I want to look at is that God disciplines. God disciplines his children. Hebrews chapter 12. Look at Hebrews chapter 12 with me. Verses 3 through 11. God chastens his children for their own good. Now, the audience of uh, the book of Hebrews had, had been discouraged at this point. They were, they were being persecuted for their faith in Christ by uh, the fellow Jews who had rejected the gospel, the difficulties that, that they were facing, uh, they, they needed to be strengthened, right? Uh, and so the inspired writer of the book here of Hebrews directs them to the example of Jesus who had endured great hostility. And he reminded them of all the things that Jesus had been through uh, and, and all that he had done for sinners, right? And, and he reminded them that they had forgotten the chastening of God. And so he says there in verse 3 through 11, he says, Remember those who are in prison as though in prison uh, with them, and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. Keep your life free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? He says, uh, excuse me, I'm reading in chapter 13. I was wondering this whole time. I was like, this is not right. Chapter 12, verses 3 uh, through 11. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. 
and, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. There we see it. The discipline of the Lord. Nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have uh, had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respect them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. <coughs> Number one, God disciplines his children. He makes sure that we are disciplined so that we will remain. And, and so, you know, it's important to, to consider these things, that, that, that God... Uh, wants us to do the right thing, right? And and that he wants us to remain faithful and, and the only way for us to, to overcome and to be stronger is to be disciplined in the work of God. Very similar. You know, discipline is not popular among uh, uh, parents today, right? Especially in America. Uh, it's kind of like we're going farther and farther from discipline, and, and, and I see that too, trust me, you know, every day, kids who, uh, you can tell, just don't have discipline, but it's so many things that they're lacking, but it's so important, because discipline is the practice of training people to obey rules, or a code of behavior, using punishment to correct disobedience, activity or experience that provides mental or physical training, that's what we're, we're talking about, and, and as, as Christians, we need discipline so that we can remain faithful, so that we're unmovable, right? So that we can stand strong. And our kids need that too. And, and there are so many things that maybe sometimes we don't realize the way that our kids are developing for so long. They're developing mentally and, and physically in so many different ways. Emotionally, they're developing. And if we're not trying to guide and, and discipline them, as they develop and as they grow and as they become smarter, then what's going to? Because they're getting that influence from somewhere. And so we need to be doing everything that we can to, to make sure that we are correcting them when they mess up. Making sure that, that, that we are leading them in the right way. It can be very uplifting and comforting to know that as Christians we have a Father who loves us, who, who, who provides for us, and that we know that He's available to us, and we know that He's going to discipline us, and, and that He's going to be there every step of the way in our Christian lives. And, and so what more could we do as parents to make sure that we are doing the same thing? That way we make sure that our kids, the kids that are in here today, will be here. We'll be here 10 years from now, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it might be, that they are faithful Christians because, see, we want them to be able to build their own faith in the God of heaven, their own relationship with God so that they will remain faithful and one day be leaders here, Bible class teachers, and helping out in every way that we can imagine. Thank you for your time this morning, and I, I hope that we're doing our best as parents to make sure that we are leading our kids in the right way. We have the opportunity now, the, the Lord's invitation is always open, and, and if you have uh, any need, maybe you're a Christian and there's sin in your life, and, and because of that sin you're separated from our Heavenly Father. It's not a good place to be in, right? And, and you have the desires for the prayers of the congregation here at Skyline. You've got so many good brothers and sisters who, who love you and want to help you through that, okay? And would be willing to pray for you on your behalf. Maybe you're not a Christian and if you've been
been studying and you have the desire to put on Christ the baptism today, we can, uh, we can help you with that as well. If you're subject in any way, won't you come as we stand and sing this song? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way while we do His good will. He abides with us still.
Lord's Supper. Uh, but to guide our thoughts this morning, I put together a few things I'd like to share with you. And it's all surrounded uh, by the theme of a call to remembrance. Uh, you know, each of us, as we kind of exact, evaluate and examine our own daily lives, we have many fond memories. We have many things that we cherish. Uh, many of those memories are priceless. We wouldn't trade them for any asset in the world. We also have some memories that maybe are we're not so fond of, but we can also look back at those and, and learn from them and grow from them and improve as our walks with Christians. But some of those fond memories may be um, the day you got married, you know, the day your senior sp spouse walked down the aisle. Uh, you'll never forget those memories, and we, we celebrate those and we're reminded by those with, with anniversaries. What about the birth of our children? You know, for a, for a young child, a birthday may be about getting gifts and prizes and cake and ice cream, but for a parent, it's about being reminded of that day that child was born and the excitement and the elation uh, that it brought uh, to your family. What about our country? Our country recognizes the importance of being uh, memorable. Uh, they've celebrated uh, holidays for our country, such as Memorial Day, where we take a day out of the year and we reflect upon all the sacrifices that have been made uh, that have provided us the freedoms that we enjoy each and every day. Our Lord and Savior was very, uh, thought memories were very important as well. One of the very first examples we have of this in the Bible is Genesis chapter 9, beginning uh, in verse 8. It said, And God spake unto Noah and his sons and him, saying, And I behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of every fowl of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither by neither shall there any be any more of a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, Of that token of that covenant which I make between me and you, and as every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations, I do set my bow in the cloud. So here is the example of a memorial that God has set in place between uh, man, between creatures, for us to be reminded uh, of that day when he destroyed the earth through flood, but he made a promise that he would never do that again, not by not by water, and we can see that when we see uh, the, the bow, the rainbow in the clouds. What about Joshua chapter 4? A uh, very uh, memorable story where the waters of the Jordan were divided, right? Where the Israelites are being pursued by the Egyptians. In chapter 4, verse 4, then Joshua called the twelve men who he had prepared out of the children of Israel, out of every tribe of man, and Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of Jordan, and take up a, every man a stone upon his shoulder, according to his number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that it may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? Ye shall answer them that the water of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and the stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel for every year. So here we've got two examples uh, right here in the Old Testament referring to memorials that, that God wanted uh, his people to be reminded of. But those are in the least compared to the memorial that we have set for us today for the observance of the Lord's Supper. So those those stones are, that were set across the River Jordan, there was no timetable, there was no frequency in which they must be observed. It said if their children ask, you can tell. You know, if you see a rainbow in the, eye, in the sky, you can re remember. But we're commanded upon the first day of the week to be reminded of the sacrifice that was made by our Lord and Savior. Jesus to Christ. So how do we observe this uh, scripturally this morning? In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, it says that we must do it in an upward fashion. So 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it. He said, when he what? He had given thanks. So what has happened here? He's petitioning the Lord, our God. He's looking up. In verse 24 and 25, it says to look back, to look back in remembrance. This do in remembrance of me. 
in verse 26, we're to look forward. By partaking of this Lord's Supper, you're, going, you're looking forward to the Lord returning again until his death when he returns. In verse 27, it says we must look inward. It says, but a let a man examine himself. And then finally in 33, we, it is an outward display. It says, wherefore, when we come together, we will partake of this in a public setting where all can evaluate, everyone can see our public display of our Lord and Savior. Christ's blood that was shed on that cruel cross. And as we take of it, please help us think back on that day, think back on that great sacrifice that was made and what it represents. And please help us take of it in a manner that be well pleasing and nice and honey. You bless the name. Thank you. 
this day. We are mindful of all Thou hast done for us. <clears throat> Father, we are so uh, thankful and we are so blessed to live in this land of riches uh, where we have uh, basically no needs that aren't provided, Father, so easily. We're thankful for that and we're mindful of those who are less fortunate. But also, Father, we're thankful to live in a place where we can uh, uh, make a living, where we can work with our hands, where we can uh, have opportunities not only to take care of ourselves and feed ourselves and our families, but also to provide uh, for thy kingdom. Father, it's our prayer at this time that as we uh, consider uh, the riches and the blessings that we have, that we have set aside a, a portion of it uh, that, uh, that we have earned, that we may be able to give back uh, unto thee, that the church, or the work of the church may not only continue, but that it may grow, that the gospel may continue to be spread through all corners of the world, and that the works here at Skyline would not only to be able to uh, allow to continue, but also uh, be improved upon, uh, that we may be edified by these funds uh, and various ministries. Father, that we pray that the, these funds will be utilized to help those who are sick, those who are in need, those who are need our prayers, Father, and support, and also, Father, to, to spread uh, the gospel. Let you be with us now as we get back into this. In Jesus' name, amen. Jonathan for that lesson this morning. I uh, appreciate uh, everyone that's here with us, especially our visitors. We invite you back to be with us in the opportunity you have to be with us. Uh, just a few moments, we'll have a closing prayer as we'll have uh, dismissed for uh, classes. So if you visit with us and you're, if you'll stay, we want to have you in one of our classes. So if you're not sure where to go, somebody here will help you direct you to the right class. So, the other announcements that need to be made.
brought us this morning. We pray, Father, that we would all be better parents, better grandparents, better examples, and teach these young children and, and young adults that they would always want to serve thee and 